Good day to you, madam. Today, my group and I will be talking about the impact of plastic consumption before and after pandemic COVID-19 and its effect on the water pollution. Before we start, every group member would like to introduce themselves. My name is Brandon Chen Long. The leader for this group and my matrix number is BG20110317. Hi, my name is Aaron Long Chai Siang with my matrix number BG20110252. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Anna Anak Janggu. My BG number is BG20110013. My name is Chin Fung Yu with BG number 20110277. Hello, my name is Elina Yo and my matrix number is BG20110132. Hi, my name is Ivy Estadio and my matrix number is BG20110178. My name is Lim Kia Hot and my matrix number is BG20110407. Hi, my name is Yatiye and my matrix number is BG20110174. Moving on to our content, these are what we will cover in the presentation. The introduction and background, the key issues or arguments pertaining to our topic, the importance of addressing these issues, the SDG responses to the COVID-19 pandemic, the general public opinion impact and their quality of life, the impact of water pollution from plastic consumption before or after COVID-19, addressing water pollution from plastic consumption during COVID-19, long-term impact of plastic pollution in the oceans, positive and negative effect of COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown measures towards the ocean, and finally, the conclusion. Now, let's start with the introduction of this presentation. Plastic consumption and plastic pollution was already a catastrophic problem for the global climate, but COVID-19 imploded this problem into new unimaginable highs. Personal protection equipment such as surgical and medical masks Non-medical masks and facial coverings must be worn by the general population to avoid human-to-human -human transmission and to protect the most vulnerable individuals. But these are ultimately dumped into landfills and the ocean after a single use. Every month during the COVID-19 pandemic, the globe used 129 billion masks and 65 billion gloves. Aside from the health risks associated with the rising plastic waste, takeaway packaging, from restaurants increases customer demand for single-use items and safe materials. The vast majority of the million tons of plastic generated each year is discarded after single use due to how it was designed and its purpose for creation. Plastic bottles, plastic bags, food containers, gloves and cups can remain in landfills and the environment for hundreds to thousands of years. Plastic which will eventually degrade into micro and nanoscopic particles as a result of physical, chemical, or biological activity in the environment and sea life can infiltrate marine animals and human food webs. Next is about the key issue or argument pertaining to our topic. First, water pollution from plastic use existed long before the COVID-19 pandemic. Because without plastic, our everyday life would be impacted by the present circumstances. More and more throw away plastic are generated due to modern human lifestyle choices. And most of this plastic end up in rivers and seas after being thrown away. In addition, an extensive study by the United Nations Environment Program revealed that plastic account for 85% of many litres and one dead by 2040. The amount of plastic waste entering the ocean would quadruple, increasing by 23 to 37 million tons per year. This equal to around 50 kg of plastic per meter of beach globally. However, the COVID-19 effect is what has significantly aggravated plastic water pollution. Plastic had a significant part in the COVID-19 pandemic. Plastic are widely used as a raw material in PPE production. As a result, it has turned into a life-saving drug to safeguard the health and safety of frontline medical personnel and regular people during the pandemic. For this reason, plastic is considered the savior in the fight against the virus during the pandemic. So, even these protective materials may harm the environment if deposed of inappropriately and result in or aggravate social ecology issues, such as the plastic contamination of waterways. For example, sea divers from a French environmental group estimate that 80% to 90% of the marine debris that reach shore is made out of one growth and mass differing in French coastal water. 
This indicates that PBE waste is present in the water because it is not properly deposed of on land. Next, undeniable that plastic consumption rises according to an increase of population around the world. Therefore, why is it important to us to address this issue? First, plastic consumption might, br might bring a negative impact on our eco ecosystem. This is due to poor attitude of some human that just thrown the rubbish or plastic dump, whether it's on landfill or ocean. Apart from that, plastic consumption um, might bring impact on uh, on ecosystem by poor waste management. The rises of plastic consumption might pollute the landfill, river, and oceans. Second, plastic consumption might bring consequences on ocean or marine life. In the past few years, when marine life start to eat and was stuck with the plastic dump. For example, turtle start to swallow and swallow the straw and some marine life was suffer stuck with plastic dumps. Lastly, these issues need to be addressed because plastic can cause flood too. This happen when drainage system were clogged by the dams and water or rainfall cannot be drained smoothly due to the uh, problem of drainage, drainage system. For example, we can um, practically for flood in Turkey for Mersin area during December 2016 until January 2017. To summarize, these issues need to be addressed well due to it being well recognized that there are numerous ways in which climate change negatively affect living things, uh, especially for environment sustainability. So that's all for this part. Thank you. Next, I will talk about how SDG issue respond to the pandemic COVID-19 and what is happening currently in the endemic. First of all, the SDG that will respond to the pandemic of COVID-19 is SDG 6, Clean Water and Sanitation. The COVID-19 endemic has made the impact of this water in clean must wash. This is because of the lack of hygiene facility and access of water, many people are devoid of their most basic defense against the infection. In addition, the role of water during the COVID-19 also plays an important role, especially in recovery stage. Therefore, SDG 6 was selected as a spotlight to this failure to defend the basic human rights. Besides that, another SDG that was respond to the pandemic COVID-19 is SDG 14, Life Below Water. The current COVID-19 pandemic has caused us the demand for single-use plastic items, personal protective equipment, PPE, such as plastic gloves, shoes cover, helmet cover, eyes protection, face shield, and many more. In addition, Packaging material from online shopping also have contributed to the increased demand toward plastics. With the increased demand toward plastic increases in a short period of time, indirectly, the plastic waste was increased globally with over 25,000 tons end up in the ocean. Therefore, it brings a very big problem for the marine life ecosystem. Lastly, the current issue that is currently happening in endemic is the oil market collapse. Oil and natural gases are two primary basic ingredients used to make plastic. Because virgin plastic has a cheaper price, it's become a first choice to use as packaging food in order to stay financially competitive in the market. Therefore, this will cause our aquatic life to become more and more polluted with plastic, such as whale, fish, seabird, turtle, and other consumed plastic, and die in a large number as a result. Next, I will continue the presentation of the impact on general public opinion and their quality of life. Basically, clean water and sanitation, as well as life below water, is essential since it provides nutrition, medicines, and mineral, as well as renewable energy resources. Not only that, it also supports jobs in agriculture. Therefore, in today's issue, plastic waste has negatively impacted these SDGs. Such impact has actually changed the way how public's opinion on using plastic bags, especially in their behaviors and routines. Plastic are being used in almost all of their daily life 
especially while doing groceries, takeaway food, and many more. However, a number of chains has officially prohibited the usage of plastic bags and replaced it with reusable bags, paper bags, and containers. It has massive change on the way how public things as reusable bags and containers are being prioritized in their daily lives. Many people have altered their regular routines and behaviors as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak as well as strive to protect our citizens' safety and health. These modifications have led to an increase in the public's opinion on the dependency on particular kind of singular-use plastics and pressure is mounting on policymakers to drop or delay measures that will deal with plastic waste and pollution. Additionally, in today's issue, which is the usage of plastic waste, it actually impacted the public's everyday life, especially in obtaining fresh water. This is because at the breakdown stage, chemical reactions are particularly dangerous because it produces new physical and chemical properties, raising the possibility that they will be harmful to living things. Thank you to Elena. Next, I would like to continue with our results and findings. Our first finding is the impact of water pollution from plastic consumption before and after COVID-19. The results showed that although the impact of plastic consumption on water pollution was already present before the COVID, the impact of plastic consumption on water pollution was more even serious after the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us look at the chart of the total number of plastic consumption in 2019. In the world's market, we recognize that USA and China are the markets that is the most larger among all countries. Therefore, they are the major influence to cause large impacts to global environment. The chart shows that the United States had the highest total plastic combined consumption, which is 72.84 megaton, followed by China in second place with 65.43 megaton of plastic consumption before COVID-19. Unfortunately, as of 2020, the COVID-19 crisis has led to a 2.2% decrease in plastic use as economic activity slowed, but a rise in littering, food takeaway packaging, and plastic medical equipment such as masks has driven up littering, which is even more worse. As economic activity resumed in 2021, plastic consumption has also rebounded. Not just that, Wuhan also produced about 240 tons of medical waste per day with a large proportion of plastic compared to previously. However, even if plastic plays a severe role in preventing and controlling the epidemic, it cannot conceal the pressure that its non-degradable characteristics have caused on the environment. The rise in global plastic production and the trash from personal protective equipment PPE, use to stop the spread of COVID-19 epidemic play a significant effect on water quality. Regardless of the degree of exposure, these are frequently single-use objects are made of polymeric materials. The latest research shows that if no action is taken by 2040, the annual global plastic waste flowing into the ocean will increase by more than 1.6 times. The harm is not only marine species being injured or killed by ingesting or becoming entangled in plastic debris, plastic pollution also threatens food safety and quality, human health, coastal tourism, and contributes to climate change. In addition, there are a variety of situations where leakage can happen, including on land. The chlorinated plastics have the potential to discharge dangerous chemicals into the soil around them which can then flow into aquifers or other nearby water systems. If just a small portion of this plastic material is carelessly discarded, then there will be thousands of it in public areas of other nations as well, which are regarded as a waste pile that adds to the pollution of polymers. This increases the expense of equipment repair and replacement in the impacted areas and significantly raise the possibility of flooding and water contamination, which is related to SDG 6. Yet, there is no doubt that in reality, it will indirectly endanger aquatic life, survival and well-being caused by the contaminated water, which is related to SDG 14. Furthermore, chemicals like BPA that leak out of microplastic are recognized for their hormonal effects and can interfere the hormone systems of a fish 
which is a major impact and human seafood resources will be disrupted as well. Thank you to Ivy for her interesting sharing. Now, I would like to continue the second finding which is addressing water pollution from plastic consumption during COVID-19. First, the finding uncovers the collaboration between nations in addressing plastic pollution. For example, Thailand has announced that free plastic bags will no longer be available in every way from 2020 and also plan to ban the plastic bags by 2022. Moreover, the Philippines government are developing a national action plan in AP on marine debris to achieve an 80% recycling rate for plastic production by 2022 to contain and prevent the spread and eliminate the threat of coronavirus and many more. This demonstrates that each nation has taken independent steps to work together and address the long-term solution to advance goal 6 of the Sustainable Development Goals. Secondly, this finding shows that investors, scientists and entrepreneurs around the world are clearly trying to innovate to get us out of this mess. From plastic traders to drones to microplastic dissolving technology. Everyone trying to find ingenious way to remove plastic from the ocean or stop it from entering its source. But can technology really solve the water pollution from plastic consumption during the COVID-19? This issue remains to be seen. However, one of the biggest questions is whether the behavioural shifts that occur during the lockdown will last or if things will return to normal. In 2021 alone, China produced 80.1 million tons of plastic affecting the ocean and it is obvious that China plays a crucial role in dealing with the problem through technology to support goal 14 of the Sustainable Development Goals. Next, I'll be explaining about the long-term impact of the plastic pollution in the oceans. In general, plastic pollution has a direct physical impact on marine life which can lead to entanglement, ingestions, starvations, and ultimately the death and extinctions of species. The movement of invasive species and pollution from polluted river to uninhabited parts of the oceans is one of the effects. While animals mistake the plastic as a food because of its size and color, leading to starvation. Furthermore, floating plastic debris may contribute to the spread of invasive species, posing threat to aquatic ecosystem biodiversity and food chain. The following is the positive and negative effect of COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown measure towards the oceans. The positive effects are improved clarity and quality of water and recovery of fishery resources and aquatic life. Fishing boats and ships around the world are unable to leave port during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Business activity in Malaysia has been also been reduced since the lockdown to limit the amount of garbage and slug that flow into wastewater from waterways that ends up in the sea. Therefore, improving water clarity and water quality also restore fishery resources and aquatic life. While for negative effect is zoonotic disease in fish and marine mammals. According to the WHO, zoonotic disease are diseases that transmit from animal to humans. Bacterial, virus, and parasite can transmit zoonotic disease. The virus cannot infect live fish because fish and animals have different defenses. However, people who handle seafood can contaminate surface and spread the coronavirus. The survival rate of the virus on seafood is unknown, but it is variability may affect transmissions. To conclude, as vital as it is to alter our own actions, doing so is not enough to halt the poisoning of the oceans with plastic. Additionally, we require legislations that control the production of plastic, enhances waste disposal, and hold plastic manufacturers accountable for the pollution they produce. We may support local and national and worldwide laws in a number of different ways that offer vital answers to lessen plastic pollution. For example, there is a policy in the United States called the 2021 Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act, a comprehensive federal bill that seeks to address the plastic pollution crisis. And there are a number of state-level initiatives to introduce extended producer responsibility EPR legislations, which holds plastic producers and distributors accountable 
for their goods and packaging at the end of their useful lives.